With all the cool new things coming in the new Tau Codex and the leaks that are flying around the internet, I feel like one thing that people might not have seen is this new relic for a Kroot Shaper, which is effectively a juiced up sniper rifle, um, perfect for killing weak characters or picking off things like a lone space marine. Um, but for me, as soon as I saw that, I got super excited and I got straight to work on making one uh, for myself to be a new sniper character for my Kroot army. So without further ado, let's jump in and let's take a look at what I've done to create this thing. So to get started, um, go ahead and select which uh, pose of Kroot rifle you'd like to use. I think pretty much any of them can work, um, but uh, it'll just obviously affect what it's going to look like in the end. So you're going to need that. And then as you just saw there, you're going to need a uh, Space Marine Eliminator Laz Fusil rifle. That's like the, the bigger uh, option from that kit. So if you know a Space Marine friend, they should have some of those lying around as I don't think too many people ended up using them. So for the Space Marine rifle, what you're going to need to do is remove the scope from it. Um, be extremely careful when you're doing this part as it's really easy to either damage the scope, lose it, or damage the top of the rifle. So get that off really carefully and then we're going to have to start taking chunks off of the bottom as we need to make the width of the rifle um, the same as the base of the Kroot rifle that's going to attach to. Uh, it's a lot uh, chunkier than the Kroot rifle. When working on the bottom, uh, this part here, just I would say just do your best to take it off in small chunks at a time. Uh, you can always take more off, but you can't really put it back on. So just take your time, do a little bit here and there, and uh, really make sure that it's even and you've, you've got it to the right size. Okay, so the parts are lining up pretty good, but now I'm realizing that I've uh, I've cut it a little too big. But like we said, it's always good to be have too much than too little. So now I can trim that uh, trim that excess off, and I'm gonna cut cut that little chunk at the back off now. Um, and I'm actually going to have it uh, cut just at the base of the energy coil part of the gun. Um, and that'll just it, it, you'll see here in a second. It'll just make a much more natural look to the gun it'll it'll look uh, more proper as, as uh, you know alien chicken guns go it'll look more more legit So same thing with the Kroot rifle as the other one. Take your time when you're cutting it. You really want that cut to be nice and straight. Take a moment or take several moments afterwards and double, triple check that it, you're, it's uh, nice and straight and smooth. Trim it up if you have to because that connection point is going to be everything. You need that to be perfectly straight. Otherwise, the whole rifle is going to be cockeyed one, or one way or the other. And I know from experience that that really ruins uh, an otherwise good kit bash. So. Just a tiny dab of super glue here when we're putting these two together. Uh, we don't want to have glue spilling all over the edges, messing up the look of the rifle. Um, and you just hold it for, you know, 10-15 seconds, make sure you get a good connection there. 
So now we're going to be fiddling around with the scope and finding the right place for it. And what's going to be important here also is to test test out the look on your body, um, on uh, you know the, on whatever whatever pose you've done, whatever model you're using to be holding this. Maybe give it a little test look to see how the head and how the rest of the body is actually going to line up with that scope. Like if you want them to be looking down the sights, um, it might have to be positioned in just such a way that it actually lines up with his eye the way it's supposed to. So right here I'm actually just uh, taking these little pieces off of the end of the rifle. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use one of them to make the little connection point for the cable or strap. Um, that's going to be coming from the bottom of the rifle. And these pieces are extremely tiny and hard to work with, which is actually why I'm thankful that there was two of them and I only needed one, because when you're trying to trim those and tidy them up, uh, you are bound to lose one of them. I would almost guarantee it. I would also highly recommend here, as you're going to see, uh, using your your clippers or some tweezers or something to actually attach it. I think that will make it a lot easier for you as it's really, really small. And it's really easy to just glue your thumb to it and then mess up the whole thing. So better safe than sorry there. So what I'm doing now is I actually have this little like organic cable. Um, which is from the Tyranid Hive Guard kit. I'm not sure what on that it's for. I guess it's probably for the gun. Um, but it's actually just the exact perfect size we need to go from that little connection point we just attached to the uh, kind of the butt of the rifle uh, just below where his trigger hand would be. And I don't know if it's going to be, I don't know if it's meant to be the strap or the cable, but I just thought it looked cool and uh, really completed the piece. So. So now the last main piece to attach is the signature Kroot um, sickle blade that's at the end of all their rifles. And for this I have the little talon from a Ripperdactyl. And um, what's cool about that is it's got that really nice um, hook shape to it already. But it's, uh, it's just unique and it's you know a little bit different than the one from the normal rifle. I was going to use the one from the Kroot rifle we have in the video. Um, but I ended up deciding to go with this. I just thought it made it look a little more unique and a little more custom, which is which is the whole point. We want this to look like a unique relic rifle, so we're going to use that. And what you're going to see here is that it actually takes me several tries to get it in just the right spot, and I actually end up ripping it off and trimming it to get a better angle. Um, and I think the first time I put it on, it was actually crooked, so... It's okay to make mistakes, just make sure you're quick about it and you're able to tidy it up. You'll see I quickly wipe the glue away um, and so it doesn't it doesn't end up causing me any issues. And I knew that later on um, I was going to be tidying everything up with little, little dabs, little bits of green stuff here and there just to make the connections really secure and smooth. And then for this, it doesn't really make sense to just have a claw hanging off the end of the rifle without anything to attach it. So I knew that I was going to be making... A small uh, green stuff um, strap or wire to go around it to uh, attach it better. So here we have our completed rifle at the end. Um, like I said after the video uh, ends I just do a little tiny bit of green stuff tidying up just on the blade and on the cable just to make those connections again nice and secure and smooth and, um, and I just do a little tiny um, cord to hold the claw on. So uh, just really quick, I'd like to say thank you to everybody for watching um, and a big shout out to my patrons. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll just end the video with a uh, quick look at the finished model here. I actually ended up staying up super late and uh, doing the whole thing in one go, which was a ton of fun. And as you can see on his back there, we ended up using the rest of the bone from that Ripperdactyl claw. So I think that just about does it for the end of the video. 
Um, as I said, it was a ton of fun to make this and uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to check it out. If you would like to support the channel, the Patreon link is down below. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.